We are all familiar with queues in our daily lives when we are waiting for service. The queue data structure also refers to the arrangement of data elements in a queue. The distinct feature of the queue is the manner in which items are introduced and eliminated. The items are permitted at one end but removed at the other. As a result, it is a first in first out method. We can perform a wide range of functions on a queue created with Python list. Queues are used to manage shared resources such as printers, files and communication lines. So if you want to learn about the same, why wait? Put on your thinking hats and let's get started with this session on queues in Python programming language. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Hello all, welcome to this video where we'll be learning regarding Q in Python. Q is a very important topic in data structures. So here we are concentrating on solving Q problem using Python programming language. So let's quickly see the agenda of this video. First, we'll be starting to learn what is Q, how does it function, and how do we represent Q, what are the different operations, and all the details about the Q. Followed by where do we use Q? The applications will also be discussed. Applications of Q, where the Q will perform what operation and uh, how it is useful for us if we learn. Q. And then we are going to implementation part that is Q hands-on demo. We are trying to code a certain program regarding Q on Google Colab platform in order to keep it very efficient and easily accessible we are using a online platform in order to work so followed by we are learning what are the different advantages of the queue and then disadvantages of the queue and we'll also sum up this particular session with a summary at the last so why wait let's quickly start to learn what is queue now let's try to understand queue linear data structure what is queue Q is a linear data structure. That means all the elements in the queue are stored in linear fashion. Now it follows a principle of P4. That means there's a restriction that whatever is the first item in is the first item that is to be out. Okay. So now let's try to make a queue. Uh, let's suppose you are in a queue and you're waiting for a movie. You are waiting for a movie ticket to buy. Okay, so there is one person, then there is another person, right? So these are few persons here, right? And you are waiting in a queue. So now the first person who is in the queue will be the first person who will get his ticket, right? Makes sense, right? So he will be the guy who will get his movie ticket first and he will be out of the queue. Then the next person who is in the queue is the next person who will get his tickets, right? And let's suppose a new person comes in, he's not going to go ahead from this person, rather he is going to go behind this person. Then the next person comes, he will go after this person and in the same, same way. So this is nothing but a P4 principle. Okay. The first person in is the first person out. Okay. Now insertion will always take place from the rear end. Okay. And if you talk about deletion, it will always take place from the front end. Okay. So this is our front end and this is our rear. Cool. So for examples, buying the tickets from the counter or it can be a movie ticket or it can be a bus station. You are in front of a bus station trying to get tickets for your uh, bus, right? These are some examples. Now there are four major operations when you talk about Q. What are those major operations? Let me clear my screen. So NQ. So you are going to insert an element in the queue. This is what you mean by NQ. DQ. You are going to delete an element okay, from the queue. Then peak first, that you're going to peak the first element that is in the, in the queue. And peak last means that you're going to peak the last element that is in the queue. So you will have two pointers. One is front and another is rear. And with the help of these pointers, you're going to NQ, DQ, peak first, peak last. You're going to perform these operations. Now, one major advantage of these operations, these four operations, is that 
all of these operations are performed in a constant amount of time. That means the time complexity of performing these operations is big O of 1. So that is why when you talk about computative programming, Q is most commonly used data structure because of these things, right? Because of its time complexity, right? You're able to perform your uh, operations in a constant amount of time. Now let's talk about applications of Q. So it is used in scheduling algorithms of the operating system like first in first out scheduling algorithm is there, round robin is there and we have multi-level Q that is there. In all these algorithms Q is used okay, for storing the data or the processes. It's also used in maintaining playlists like when you have a playlist, let's suppose you have 10 songs in a queue, right? And after one song, the next song which is in the queue will be played and it goes on uh, for like this, right? So for maintaining a playlist, again, a queue is used. It's also used in interrupt handling. Uh, let me take an example here. You know the process state diagram of operating system. So it is also used at that time. So uh, when you have an interrupt and therein, if your process is is being executed at that time that pro process is printed out and it is stored in a queue. Now the next time when this priority or this interrupt is handled once it is done then it starts picking up the process which was in the queue and starts executing that. In the meanwhile if there are some other processes that those processes will also be in the queue. So a queue is maintained and once the interrupt is handled they will start taking out that process that is that was being executed earlier and executes it and completes its execution and terminates the process. So it is also used in interrupt handling. After learning what is Q in Python, theoretically, let's know how to implement that into practicality. So Q will be having two different basic operations that is NQ and DQ. So these things will be shown in with a simple example in Python. So let's quickly hop on to Python ID that is Google Colab for the reason I'm using it is visible for everybody to access because it's online availability and it is open source. So let's quickly start the simple program for Q displaying two different functions that is NQ and DQ. So here is the Google Colab environment where you'll be working. So what we are doing in this particular core is we are creating a class called Q, right? We are also giving different functions for NQ and DQ. NQ is nothing but entering or inserting values to the Q and DQ is deleting values from the Q, right? As you all know, Q will follow FIFO, that is first in, first out. So wherever you want to buy a ticket, for example, in your railway stations or anywhere, you will stand in the queue, right? So whoever in the first will get the ticket first and he or she will move out of the queue. It's same in here as well, but the elements are not humans. It's all integer numbers. So whatever the number you put in first is the first number to get out, right? So let's quickly see. Here we have two different functions as I mentioned, that is NQ and DQ. And later you will display. We are uh, seeing three different functions, displaying NQ and DQ. So what happens here is we are using self.q.append. So here, whatever the item, whatever the uh, number you give, right, it will be inserted to the back of the queue, right? It is maintaining the sequential process of inserting the numbers or the integers or the values you give in order to insert into the queue. And while deleting, you can use pop, right? Is it append for insert and pop for deleting? And display is nothing but it's normal print statement. You will display whatever the queue it is accordingly. So let's quickly run this program here i've just used certain numbers one two three four five five numbers and the after dqing right what it should display it should remove one first and two three four five should be displayed so let's quickly see how it is right okay so as you can see whatever the uh, queue was given is printed at the first place that is one two three four five and then after removing the first element right so the first person will be removed because it is FIFO. So two, three, four, five is that. So this is how a simple basic queue will work in Python. 
So after knowing a basic queue implementation, right? Let's see one of the type of queue that is circular queue implementation. There are many types of queues, but still I'm taking circular queue as an example and showing you the same operations of inserting and deleting elements from the queue. So let's quickly hop into the Google Colab ID and check out the program. How can we build a circular queue in Python? Here is the program for circular queue. And what are the different elements we have inside this program? Let me tell you. The first part is class declaration. So here, my circular queue is the class, right? So class can be named accordingly or whatever you feel right. So keep it very program oriented rather than keeping which is off topic. So here it is my circular queue. And then again, we have two different initialization that is for nq as well as dq so whatever the elements we use here right whatever the items we try to insert in the queue we have to ensure whether the queue is full or the queue is uh, empty and there is still space or not so all the conditions should be checked so let's hop into nq and check out what are the different conditions you have to check so the first thing is the queue is full or not so before inserting something, say for example, the queue size is five and the element six has been inserted, then it has to show an error message that is, there are only five spaces, they are inserting sixth element, it is not allowed, hence the queue is filled. So in order to print that, we use this, the circular queue is filled statement. So the next part is, you have to, no, uh, how when it is empty, right? In order to have the DQ, the main condition is whenever the uh, elements are out of the queue, then it has to be declared as the queue is empty. So nothing to delete from the queue. It's every, all the elements or items are deleted already. So the error message or the statement to the user will be the circular queue is empty now. There is nothing to pop out or delete or DQ. So apart from that, also, you can also uh, find if you are trying to print something, right? If it is empty queue, it does not have anything, then you have to show up the no element in the circular queue found statement. Why? Because if there is no elements, there is nothing to show or display, the display function does not work. The print does not happen. So this is the basic idea of this particular code. And accordingly, we have used the iterations and the declarations. So next, you have to look at the inputs, what we are giving. I'm trying to give 12, 22, 31, 44, and 57, right? So the five elements for the queue is being given. And what you have to do is you have to check the initial values. First, you have to display the initial values. What is the exact queue which you have given with the elements to the user? And then which is deleted? So the first element is deleted, obviously, but yes, how the circular queue is different from the basic queue, right? So let's quickly run the program in order to see the output. Okay, if you could see the output here, right? So initial queue values. So is whatever we have given here, that is 12, 22, 31, 44, and 57. So after removing an element, so obviously the first and first all process, the first element will be removed. So it is, 22, 31, 44, and 57. What is difference between a normal queue and a circular queue? If you could see here, right, in the last space, after 57, you have a space allocated. So, in normal queue, it is not connected. Here, the front end rail is being connected, forming a circle, right? If one, the first element, for example, 12, goes out, the 22 will take the first place and 31 followed by 44 followed by 57. The last place will be empty, right? So it is in circular motion. So whatever you want to insert again, right? So that will, for example, if you want to insert six, right? Six will sit in the fifth position that is after 57, right? This, this will be connected circular motion. That is front will be connected to the rear part. So this is the difference between the normal basic queue and the circular queue. Now let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of queue. First, we are talking about advantages. So it follows a principle of P4 or the elements are stored in a P4 manner. That means let's suppose this is a queue and in this queue you have elements. So the deletion will take place from the friend, right? And 
the insertion will take place from the rear side. So this is known as DQ, the deletion, and insertion is known as NQ operation. And both these operations are performed in a constant amount of time. So that is one of the advantages, right? And the insertion from beginning and deletion from end takes a constant amount of time. Plus, if we want to do peak first, peak last, all these operations are performed in a constant amount of time. And this is most widely used data structure when we talk about CP, that is computative programming. When we talk about computative programming, this data structure is most commonly used because of these features that all the operations that are performed like insertion, deletion, peak first, peak last, NQ, DQ, all these operations are performed in a constant amount of time. Now let's talk about disadvantages. Since we are only able to delete or insert from the front and the rear, that means deletion from front and insertion from the rear. So the restriction of insertion or any manipulation, right? We have a restriction over these, right? What these operations, insertion and deletion. So this restriction is always there. And so the data structure that is the queue is not, is not much flexible, right? We are fixed. We can delete and insert element in a fixed pattern or in the FIFO manner, thus it's not much flexible. Now we have come up to the last section of this video that is summary. So let's recap what do we repeat. So let's recap what did we learn in this particular video. We learned regarding what is Q at the first place, followed by what are the different applications of the Q. We also learned how Q is represented, what are the different operations which is performed on the Q and the complete details and interaction about it. Followed by we started implementing with a program with a code on Google Colab, uh, online Python programming IDE, which generally uh, it's useful to everybody, it is easily accessible. So we started uh, coding on Q concept in that particular platform. After obtaining the results and understanding the code, we finally started learning like what are the different advantages and disadvantages are there if we use Q. So hope this video was informative. This is Neha signing off. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed for our channel yet, I would request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on notification bell so that you don't miss any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and do like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure you comment on this video any queries or suggestions. I'll be more than happy to respond to all of them.